Europe's refugee, migrant crisis is back with a vengeance. And the ruling class elites are pushing for a United Nations global compact on migration that would spell the end of Europe, and national sovereignty worldwide. Europe's refugee, migrant crisis is back with a vengeance. Italy, which is being swamped by migrants pouring across the Mediterranean from northern Africa, is saying enough. On July 2, at a meeting with EU interior ministers, Italy's interior minister Marco Minetti called on other European countries to open their ports to the rescue boats that are bringing waves of new migrants to Italy. If the only ports refugees are taken to are Italian, something is not working. Minetti told the Italian newspaper Il Messaggero. We are under enormous pressure, he added. According to the UK's daily newspaper The Independent, more than 500,000 migrants have landed at Italian ports, most arriving in Sicily, since 2014 and the numbers are on the rise. Since the start of this year, 83,650 people have reached Italy by sea a 20% increase compared to the same period in 2016. The UK Telegraph reported on July 2 that over the past week alone, around 10,000 migrants have been ferried to Italy after being rescued from overcrowded, rickety boats travelling from Libya. More than 2,160 have died trying to reach Europe from Africa so far this year. The trans-Mediterranean deluge is being stoked by private NGOs, non-governmental organizations, that are sponsoring charity boats to meet the smuggler boats at sea, supposedly out of humanitarian concern. This has encouraged smugglers to ramp up their dangerous transport business, telling migrants that they will be rescued by the NGOs or the Italian Coast Guard, if the overloaded boats are in peril of sinking. Summer is the time when the migration push escalates, and Europeans are now headed into Migration Crisis 3.0, the third year in a row of over-the-top chaos. The disaster that had been building for years in the European Union burst into full-blown, undeniable calamity in 2015. The results of the EU's promiscuous migration policies, mounting terror attacks, mass rapes by migrant mobs, crime waves, riots, Islamification, skyrocketing welfare costs, etc. caused the predictable public backlash, aiding the June 2016 vote by British voters to exit the EU, Brexit, and fueling the explosive rise of nationalist, and EU parties throughout Europe. National politicians and bureaucrats from the EU and United Nations who had engineered the debacle backpedaled and reversed course but only rhetorically and temporarily. From Immigration to Migration Not satisfied, apparently, with the chaos they have already wrought, the globalists responsible for these disasters, most notably, the European Council on Foreign Relations, ECFR, the German Institute for International and Security Affairs, Stiftung Wissenschaft und Politik, SWP in German, and other affiliates of the U.S. Council on Foreign Relations, CFR, are pushing to bring millions more Muslim migrants to the EU. It's as if they are declaring, damn the torpedoes, and the public outcry, full speed ahead. On June the 28th to the 30th, the Global Forum on Migration and Development, GFMD, held its 10th annual summit, with this year's overarching theme being, towards a global social contract on migration and development. The terms global social contract and global compact appear to be interchangeable phraseology for the same agenda aimed at doing away with national sovereignty and national borders. That agenda calls for, as we have reported many times previously, establishing a legal right in international law to migration, as opposed to immigration, which is a privilege granted by the destination country according to the criteria determined under its sovereign authority. If a nation loses control over this authority, then it becomes merely a vassal state to whatever entity it has allowed to usurp this primal power. The GFMD summit held in Berlin was aimed at solidifying support for the New York Declaration for Refugees and Migrants, 
which emerged from the Summit for Refugees and Migrants hosted by the United Nations General Assembly last September 19 and the Leaders' Summit on the Global Refugee Crisis hosted by President Obama the following day. As we reported last year during the run-up to those events, Sarah's migration rental mob amps up for August 28th Washington, D.C. refugee rally, the usual suspects, the Sarah's, Ford, and Rockefeller Foundations, invested heavily in creating the appearance of popular support by funding plenty of street radicals to demonstrate for this global governance scheme. The UN Obama events and the recent GFMD summit in Berlin are part of an extensive orchestrated effort to achieve a global compact for migration in 2018. For the first time since the formation of the GFMD in 2007, Two countries, Germany and Morocco, will co-chair the forum. From January 2017 to December 2018, at a time when migration policy topics are high on the political agenda around most of the world. Using Hate Crime Gestapos to Quash Dissent The New York Declaration adopted by the UN General Assembly is heavy on penalizing as hate criminals all who might have the temerity to challenge the UN plans for mass migration. We strongly condemn acts and manifestations of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia and related intolerance against refugees and migrants, the document declares. And, it continues, we deplore all manifestations of xenophobia, racial discrimination and intolerance. We will take a range of steps to counter such attitudes and behavior, in particular with regard to hate crimes hate speech and racial violence. We welcome the global campaign proposed by the Secretary General to counter xenophobia and we will implement it in cooperation with the United Nations and all relevant stakeholders. And who will those relevant stakeholders be that will help the UN implement its global campaign against xenophobia? Well, besides the obvious groups here in the United States that are already splattering the xenophobe and racist charge on all who question the plans for massive influxes of migrants and refugees, the ACLU, Southern Poverty Law Center, Center for American Islamic Relations, etc. There are the vicious Antifa stormtroopers who have been rioting, burning cities, and violently, physically attacking all those they accuse of being intolerant for opposing the migrant invasion. Sitting above these stakeholders are groups such as the GFMD, the International Organization for Migration, IOM, the Global Migration Group, GMG, the International Migration Initiative, IMI, the Columbia Global Policy Initiative, CGPI, and others. These organizations combine public and private funding, along with muscle from national governments and UN agencies, to push the open borders agenda. The International Organization for Migration, IOM, notes on its website, that the GFMD's strong link with the United Nations is maintained through the Special Representative of the, UN, Secretary General on International Migration and Development, SRSG, Mr. Peter Sutherland. Sutherland, readers may remember, is a key one worlder who has been at the center of the UN scheme to de-Christianize and Islamize Europe. He is a former chairman of Goldman Sachs, former European chairman of the Trilateral Commission, and a former member of the ultra-secretive Bilderberg Group Steering Committee. In an October 8, 2015 interview with the UN News Center, Sutherland called national sovereignty an absolute illusion that had to be put behind us. I will ask the governments to cooperate, to recognize that sovereignty is an illusion, Sutherland said, that sovereignty is an absolute illusion that has to be put behind us. He continued, the days of hiding behind borders and fences are long gone. We have to work together and cooperate together to make a better world, he said. And that means taking on some of the old shibboleths, taking on some of the old historic memories and images of our own country. In testimony before the British House of Lords in 2012, Sutherland criticized Europeans who still nurse a sense of our homogeneity and difference from others. And, he declared, that's precisely what the European Union, in my view, should be doing its best to undermine. Yes, 
The better world envisioned by Peter Sutherland and his ilk is one in which all vestiges of national and local independence, all checks and balances on centralized force, and all cohesive homogeneity, are swept away. Sutherland, naturally, is a boon companion of George Soros, Henry Kissinger, the late David Rockefeller, and the rest of the uber globalists who are so keen on battering down national borders and fermenting chaos, political, social, economic, moral, and spiritual, as a means to attaining their new world order. Sutherland and the Global Forum on Migration and Development are being mightily aided in this latest push for national suicide by the usual euthanasia experts from the European Council on Foreign Relations and the German Institute for International and Security Affairs, Stiftung Wissenschaft und Politik, SWP in German, both of which are affiliates of the U.S. Council on Foreign Relations, CFR, and the British Royal Institute for International Affairs, RIIA, the two main organizations pushing for world government since the early part of the last century. Among its efforts in this area, the ECFR produced a study in December 2016 for its elite membership titled, The EU's Migration Policy in Africa, Five Ways Forward. The ECFR study promotes the Valletta Action Plan that emerged from the EU Summit on Migration held in November 2015 at Valletta, on the island of Malta. The core of the Valletta Action Plan is a whole new group of faux development programs that are transferring even more plunder from already overtaxed European taxpayers to African and Middle Eastern governments. The EU Emergency Trust Fund for Africa, the European External Investment Plan, the EU-Africa Migration Partnerships, and the European Development Fund, these and other initiatives that came out of the Valletta Confab, say the EU cheerleading section, will address the root causes of migration. Of course, any time politicians claim to be addressing the root causes of any problem it is usually a cue to grab your pocketbook, because they invariably are envisioning an endless and mind-numbingly expensive stream of projects aimed, ostensibly, at ameliorating ill-defined social crises of their own imagination, or real crises of their own creation. Early in June, the German SWP affiliate of the CFR released two reports to bolster the GFMD's migration summit, which convened at the end of the month, as noted above. The reports, by the SWP's Stefan and Janent, and Koch, are titled International Cooperation on Migration Policy. Dare to do more, the Global Forum on Migration and Development in Berlin opens up opportunities and global migration governance and mixed flows, implications for development-centered policies. Together with many other statements by European government officials and globalists from the top business, banking, and media circles, the SWP reports clearly show that the ruling class elites intend to press ahead with an expanded version of the EU-wide migration policies that have already devastated the continent. As we reported a year ago, revolt, and revenge, of the elites, more globalist sabotage of Brexit, following the Brexit uprising. Many of the one-worlders dropped all pretense of caring about their phony appeals to democracy. Jeremy Shapiro, research director for the European Council on Foreign Relations, ECFR, and a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution, penned an op-ed titled, Brexit was a rejection of Britain's governing elite. Too bad the elites were right. James Draub, a member of the American CFR penned an even more arrogant diatribe under the haughty title, It's time for the elites to rise up against the ignorant masses. Traub, of course, counts himself among the all-wise elites, whom he credits with being sane, while all who oppose the power grabs and totalitarian designs of said elites are ignorant far-right nativists who are mindlessly angry. The pontificators of the globalist punditocracy have been proclaiming that recent defeats of anti-EU candidates in national elections in Austria, Netherlands, and France are a signal that the populist backlash has crested and is headed for history's dust heap. But that is wishful thinking on their part, they have no idea how severe the next backlash will be when, not if, 
The next migrant wave sweeps across Europe and the same middle of the European electorate realizes the depth of the betrayal by the same elites praised by the likes of Chappelle.